Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I got a question and I'm very long-winded so I figured I would answer it with a video or maybe I'll answer it with a song. Well, no I'm not going to do that. But do you know why? Because I can't sing worth a crap. Anyway, uh, so let me answer this question. I get this one all the time. It's about radioactive decay. And the question basically boils down to this. If you have a radioactive substance, and let's say that it has a half-life of a year, so we know that four or five years later, there's still going to be some of it left, right? It's slowly, slowly decaying over time. So here's the question. Why does some of it decay right now? Because if we put a detector over it, it's decaying. But in a year from now, it's still decaying. And two years more from there, it's still decaying, and so on. It's getting less and less. But why are some of the atoms, like, waiting until then to decay versus now? Of course, they're not waiting. But it could seem like that to us, right? Why is that? Well, let me answer that. It's actually a pretty good question. Uh, the reason is, is that radioactive decay is a purely probabilistic thing. Now you're thinking, purely probabilistic? What does that mean? Probabilistic? Yeah. Probabilistic means that it's there are that there's a uh, probability that governs it. Let me give you an example of something else probabilistic to help you out. Uh, what's probabilistic? Ah, I know. The flip of a coin. Do I have a coin anywhere? God, I have no coins. I have no coins. Pretend I have a coin. I'm going to go with, my God, you should be able to pretend I have a coin. It's really simple. It's a coin, right? You flip a coin. You flip, you see like a bottle cap, right? You flip it and you catch it. Heads or tails, right? In fact, we'll use the bottle cap. Heads, tails. And if you're not from the United States and don't know what heads and tails means, top of the coin where the face usually is, bottom of the coin where some other random stuff is. Because all coins look about the same. Okay. If I were to flip this once and catch it, heads. I do it again. What's the chance that I got heads or tails? It's one chance over two possible outcomes, heads or tails. So one over two. Oh, look, I got another one. Let's try it a third time. What's the chance of getting three heads in a row? Well, one over two is the chance, times one over two is the second chance, times one over two, which is the third chance. So it'd be one in two times two is four times two. It's a one in eight chance that this will be heads again. No, I think I flipped that in my own hand. <laughs> Let's try not to rig it. There. Oh, screw it, it's hit. Okay, one in eight chance. The point of the matter is this could be a waiting issue too. Um, so that's a purely probabilistic thing. Winning the lottery, uh, that sort of thing. If you were to take uh, 10 uh, black uh, M&Ms, little dark brown ones, and one red one, and you were to throw them together like this, shake them up, and then pick one randomly and eat it, What's the chance that you got the red one out of those eight? Uh, or, sorry, out of the uh, 11 m and It'd be one in 11. Okay, so you get the idea of a probabilistic event. Basically, in an atom, you have, uh, uh, for decay, which is going to be beta or alpha, because gamma is not a, a form of decay, uh, for the beta and the alpha um, uh, decays, what you have is you have atoms that are in an unstable state for various reasons. There are many different types of them, like the alpha decay is, un is an unstable cluster decay, and beta decay is an unstable isomeric transition usually, or something to that effect. depends on what type it is. But the point of the matter is you have an unstable system where the, the majority of, if you think of like a bell curve, the majority of the chances are that the thing is going to stay together because it's unstable, but it's not completely falling apart. It's like a waiter juggling plates, right? They're juggling it, they're juggling it, they're juggling it. There's a chance they might lose it and drop a plate, but it's a small chance. Same with the atom. There's a small chance that one of those particles might pop its way out in an alpha decay or in a beta decay it could be absorbed. But the point of the matter is there's a small chance. Now, why don't all those chances come true? Because chances don't just come true. They're a chance. In given time, the chance uh, 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 plays itself out until it happens, right? Flip the coin until I get a heads. Play the lottery until I might win. I could play 100 years and not win. I could play in the very first lottery ticket I ever buy. I could, yeah, I could win the lottery. So maybe I, uh, the, the other part I think it bothers a lot of people too is why is it, you, so you understand why it, take, why it takes time because it takes time for the, each little atom that's playing the lottery of decay if you like to randomly win its chance to decay. It takes a long time. That people get, but a lot of people don't understand why does it, it goes down over time because there's less and less atoms to decay because they've already decayed, right? That makes sense. What a lot of people don't get is why it curves. In fact, well, there's my screen darkening. 
In fact, it starts up, let me see if I can do this for you. It starts up here with a high amount of decay, and over time, not only does it go down, but it doesn't go straight like this. It goes more like this. So if you have something with a one-year half-life, you have 100 atoms of the one-year half-life. In one year, you'll have about 50, plus or minus. In another year, you'll only have 25. And then in another year, you'll have 12.5, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, maybe that makes a little more sense, but let's do it mathematically. I'll, I'll show it to you with a chance with this calculator, which has one kilo electron volts to joules listed on the back because I need that really often. All right, math. We are going to take 36 atoms, 36 atoms, right? 36 single atoms. And we're going to say that each of these little atoms is going to be a person to make it simpler. Okay, so we have 36 little people in the room and they're going to decay. Here's how the game works. Each one of them has a six-sided dice. Well, I know a single dice is called a die, a six-sided die, but I don't like the word die and I never have, and so I'm going to call it a dice. And if you don't like it, you can, you can um, well, I was going to say something more offensive. You can um, go jump. Anyway, <clears throat> so every one minute, everybody rolls their die, dice. Damn it, see, I screwed myself up. And they look at what they get. If they get a number one, they decay and they can run away. If they get any number but a number one, if they get a two, three, four, five, or six, they just stay and it's next minute they do it again, next minute they do it again. So let's see what happens. All right, so there's a one chance over six possibilities of getting any particular number on the dice, right? One in six, makes sense, one in six chance. So what we can do is we can say of the 36 people, we can divide that number by six and we can actually conclude that six people will probably, probably six people will roll a one and, and decay, they'll leave, they'll leave the room, six. Now that's not 100% true, it's probabilistic. Technically speaking, if we did it the first time everybody rolled, they could all roll a one and leave. Or, or, or technically speaking, they could, you know, all roll nothing and not, you know, whatever. The point, point is, is that in a small sample space of 36 people, that could happen. But if you put a million people in that room, it's very likely as you started rolling and rolling and rolling, it would, the probabilities would even out nicely and very smooth right out because there's just so many chances going off at the same time. But keep in mind, it is theoretically possible that a piece of uranium could just instantly decay. All the decays could go off at once, which would really suck for the person holding it. But the probability of that, hap of that happening is so low that if you waited for the entire length of the universe's existence, it may never happen but it's not a zero probability. So, all right. So 36 people have rolled. 36 people have rolled. Six of them have uh, have rolled a uh, one on the, die, on the dice and they get to leave. So let's subtract them. 36 minus six. We already know the answer to that is 30. So it has 30 people left. Okay, six disappeared. Now we do it again. Each one of them has a one in six chance. So we divide by six again. Boing. We get five. 30 minus 5, those people leave the room, they roll a 1. Now there's 25 people. So the first time we were able to eliminate 6 people, the next time we eliminated 5. Weird, huh? Now we take that 25 and divide it by 6. And now we get 4.16 something or other. Let's just round down. Okay, 4. So we had... Um, All right, so let me do my math again here. All right, so now we have about 21 people, plus or minus, right? Divided by six. Now we only lose 3.5. We're losing less and less people each time. It's curving down because there's less people, so less of them are going to roll the probability. The probability is the same. The probability hasn't changed. See, 3.5 will round down. I'm just going to round down for not because you should always round down, but just because I'm rounding down because I'm lazy. So now we have 21 people, and we minus 3 from them. We have 18 people now. So we have 18 people divided by 6. 18 people divided by 6. Now we have 3 again, because I did 3.5 and rounded down. I probably should have rounded up, but whatever. So now we take 18, we minus 3 from it. We have 15. 15. 15 people are left in the room. All right, and how long has it been? It's been 36, 30, 
25, like, what was it, 21? 20, 20, 21? Like, I don't know, 18? It's been five or six generations of this whole thing, and we're getting pretty low at this point. So 15 divided by 6, every one of those 15 people still has the same probability. Same probability, what are they waiting for? Why aren't they all just disappearing? Well, you see why, 2.5. Well, we're going to round that down, just because I'm lazy. So now we're down to 13. 13 divided by 6 is 2 again, because I really should be rounding up. But you get the point. And let's get this all the way down. Let's do this a few more times quickly. Let me just quickly do this for you. And really, really quickly we hit like uh, 1.8. And then we hit 1.6. And then we hit... It's terrible. By the time we get down to, let's say, the number 3, just to give you an example, by the time we get to the number 3, we're at 0.5 and so on. And we, we what, what it really boils down to is that you can never hit 0. And as the time goes on, the decays don't just decay. They actually decay probabilistically and exponentially. And the whole thing is solved by e raised to the uh, to the x. And I can show you the math for that sometime if you like. Let me know if you want to see the math for that. But that is basically the explanation of why that happens. So the atom always, all atoms in a particular radioactive substance always decay at the same rate. The rates never change, not even the tiniest, 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 tiniest bit. Which is why radiocarbon dating is so awesome. But over time, the actual population is what's changing. And the number of decays is not just how often they occur, but how often they occur w with how many people there are. You see what I mean? A lot of people, a lot of winners. And uh, there you go. So, oh, oh my God, 12 minutes. God, I'm so long-winded. And the fruit fly just went by.